I live uh, at the end of the road, near the top of a mountain, right outside of Paradise Valley, near Livingston, Montana. Uh, I live in a little cabin that was built by a dear friend of mine. And he built this cabin before there was even power on the land. I moved up there before there was power. And so the cabin is built from trees, from the land, and hand-hewn, and this wonderful, simple, earthy feeling. And it, it's, it's a choice place for me right now in my life. I grew up in Montana, and I'd have to say that I'm incredibly influenced by this place. In fact, I didn't even realize how much I was influenced in a way until other people started seeing it in my work. I am incorporating materials from the environment that I live in and from memories of places in my youth, which were Montana places. And, and um, although I don't use exclusively local materials, I'm definitely heavily influenced by local materials. I mean, they're right here. The wood selection is, is a big part of the process. I have wood like some painters would have pallets of paint, you know. I have, I have to have way more wood than I could ever imagine ever using because you got to find that one piece and you got to find that one piece that fits into the other perfect piece. I like to use power tools in the early stages because they get rid of a lot of wood fast. And once I've seen the image, I just want to get to the image. Then I follow the power tools with hand tools. And to me, there isn't really a substitute for the, the look and the feel of, of hand chisel marks on wood. The easiest way I can explain how the shapes come out of the wood is really, it boils down to light. It's all about light. I mean, form happens because of light. And so if I can get the light to bounce off the wood in a certain angle or to glance this way or to darken here, and if I'm thinking only about light, then eventually the shape is there. My experience of the West has to do with this whole idea of like pushing boundaries and, and, and going beyond the fence line or in exploring and, and that whole thing. And so, so I wanted a, a, a piece that was not just furniture, but it was sculpture. And I felt like the landscape of the West is like grand and powerful, but it's sensuous and delicate. It's this whole big mix. I love the juxtaposition of soft and hard, of elegant and, and strong, of grace and beauty. And, and I see all of these things in the horses, and I see these things in the wood. And so for them to be together just seems to make a lot of sense to me. The way the wood curves and flows and the manes begin to just then flow in and back out of the wood. And to me, the most obvious, wonderful, kind of functional piece to do this in would be a bed, a playground. I think if you were to, to relate which I was first, either a woman or an artist, I would have to say that um, I'm an artist first, because I think an artist is a, is a really strongly human quality. And then the gender thing kind of comes after the, the fact of being human. I like the idea of a piece being memorable. If, if somebody's seen the work and then they recall it years later for whatever reason, maybe a tactile quality or maybe it was the imagery or maybe it was just um, the sight or the feel or the thoughts they had when they saw it, I like the idea of a piece lasting in someone's mind. The reason why I create art it's a really tough question. Okay. <laughs> you have to start with the easier right. question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, why do you like that. chocolate so much? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Why do I create art? I just I can't imagine not creating art. 